dude, it's happening. The Rogue's Toast. What? Look at all these beautiful people. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys, we are live here at Dragon Con in uh, Atlanta. Hello, beautiful people. I'm Brian Brushwood, and we are going to get this into our lives. Uh, joining me right now, the tall beer dude himself. Yo. I, I don't know where he gets the name. <laughs> But uh, this is Michael Lipton, who designed the Rogue's, uh, uh, what did we decide, what, do we call it the Rogue's Brew? We call it the Rogue's Brew. And it's what kind of beer? It's uh, American Brown Ale. Uh, nice, good, solid, multi monster. And uh, uh, are there particular notes or tricks that, that you wanted to put into it? Because uh, uh, like one of the things we talked about was I wanted it to feel something kind of timeless, something that you might have had during, you know, right before the Revolutionary War, but you could have today as well. Yeah, so uh, going for things that were back then, uh, they usually had really bready flavors because that's kind of the spent grains they got from making bread that throw it into beer so when something bready malty kind of brown dark earthy flavors onto there something that's sticks to the ribs nice and heavy and thick like that and, and what what were the subs because to me I, I like we were able to stumble our way through making this batch but all i did was follow your instructions i don't even i i assume it looked like was there oats in there i saw oats and <laughs> barley and, actually, and a little bit of hops so yeah, it has hops, but it's actually all barley. It's just kilned at different levels. So kind of think coffee, you can get it at different roast levels. Got it. Same thing done with the grain to give it different flavors. Okay. So it had some heavily roasted, some lightly roasted, some moisture roasted. So it has kind of a caramely note on there. And that all in different combinations melts together to make this beer. So, uh, and you made it, you made the recipe, but it's not like you took the three weeks to make a batch and then taste it. You have the level of expertise where you're like, <laughs> Brian will like this, 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 and that, and exactly. I'm sure it will be fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's something I've been working on for years, is figuring out how to take people's notes and build it right into what they're looking for on the first go. Well, it was amazing. You sent over those first few bottles, and I remember sitting down with John, and he cracked one open, and it was like, yes, yes, this 100%. <laughs> now, I do have to confess uh, uh, that, that before I left for Dragon Con, I did crack open one of the homebrew versions I made, yep. and uh, there was a little bit of sediment down at the bottom. As well there should be. But outside of that, I was like, it worked, and I walked down, and I, and I said to my wife, I was like, here, have it, and she kind of gave me this skeptical look, and you could tell that on the list of things she expected for it to be good was not on the list <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, it was it was fantastic so so what's the difference with, uh, with the keg here because you, you uh, like because we had some people who did a bottle brewing Wait, where, yeah. Matt, come on over here sure thing uh, by the way for those of you guys on the stream this is uh, Matt Waffleopagus uh, you did a, a, a different way oh, right uh, so yeah, no, uh, he can correct me if I get anything wrong. Oh, I'll correct you like with no problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, there's two really ways of doing the bottling. The first is what I ended up doing, which is you have to put some priming sugar and then pour the beer in. And then once it seals, the yeast that is already in the beer will eat the, uh, will eat the sugar, which will then further slightly ferment it, releasing CO2, which carbonates the beer. That's approval. You're getting he, a nod. He did not do that. So his is a kegging system, which does not have that extra sugar. So it artificially, well not artificially, but inserts the uh, CO2 directly, and he should have a CO2 canister somewhere. Yeah, I usually in have a CO2 canister uh, that this is held under pressure at a specific temperature, so it forces the carbon dioxide that normally the yeast would be doing, but I'm just doing it through a canister. Uh, gets at the carbonation levels I want, I can fine tune it as opposed to having yeast, which is a wild beast. Who knows what's gonna do? Uh, and then right now, it's all carbonated, and I have just a tiny little CO2 cartridge here that actually will push it out. Okay, That's so so for this, you made this this one batch you yeah. made in this keg. Um, man, I guess it's time. So so you did have to uh, pour some foam out, but I, are we good? Is it is it it's, go time? Uh, first couple pours might be just a little foamy. This thing has been trucked over a few state lines, uh, but it should be good to go. I think <laughs> yeah. so. Is that something that uh, that that uh, uh, are are uh, are we bootlegging? Well, <laughs> what I have done is I shipped a yeast sample for. You know, scientific reasons. It happens to be suspended in a fluid that the yeast is happy with, which is cold beer. Sure. <laughs> this sounds like some well-rehearsed code oh, yes. among brewers. Yes. Uh, okay. All right. Well, then uh, uh, I guess who wants to who wants to be among the first? Uh, uh, who wants to be first? Uh, right over here. Come on oh, here. Okay. All right. What's your name, boss? My name is Lucas. Lucas. Good to see you, Lucas. Uh, uh, are you a fan of brown ales? I think so. Okay, we'll find out. We're, we're, we're gonna get. We're gonna, gonna get just a little foamy as it sails up. Mm -hmm. All right. Cheers, everyone. All right. Go for it. Well, oh, that's really fucking good. 
Yeah? That's really fucking good. Dude, right on. All right, I guess we'll keep it going. How much do we have in here? Are we going to be able to, everyone will be able to get some? We something. have, yeah, have effectively a 24 bottle case into this just tiny little keg here. So we'll have plenty to go around with people. Uh, yeah, right on. Um, people are asking why I don't look at the Periscope, because I'm currently doing the Periscope, is the, is the reason. Uh, Ric Flair, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Everybody's lining up for their communion. Make sure, make sure that you guys save enough that we can all give a toast at the same time. Now, what is this monster growler you're rocking? It's just a growler. And I thought it looked badass. And, and this is filled with your, your yes. home brew? And, and, and it actually fermented in this. Now, you so. did something different. Like, uh, uh, you had uh, not previously homebrewed before this. Right. But you did not go for the kit we had because you wanted to go big or go home. You got the Well, there was, that, there was that, and it was also a matter of time. It wouldn't have arrived for me to me in time to actually start the brewing to have it here. Got so, it. So, yeah, I, I had a, uh, a five-gallon kit versus your one-gallon kit. Yeah. And uh, right, we was, don't need to measure the size of my kit. We don't need to whip our kits out, all right? Well, yeah, and so there was a slight differentiation on how it goes. There was an all-grain brew versus an extract brew, which is what my kit was designed to do. Is extract brews. Yes. Okay, so... Uh, versus y'all's, your kit being an all-grain. Right, so so when we, we had to make our uh, wart... Uh, using the grains, you were able to use extracts for some of that part. I, uh, to be honest with you, yeah, this, I this, like this, I this all, yeah, this all sounds like something we gotta ask Michael Lipton. Yeah, I was about to say, you, you ready? Have, have, you, have you had so it yet? Are you waiting for the foam to go down? I'm still Curtis Larock, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, hello. All right. And who else? Man, we got a huge turnout. This is great. All right, have you had it? Have you had it yet? Are you waiting for the foam? Let's trigger. I don't even want to pull it. Wait for it. Another one. Another kick. Perfect. Here we go. Nailed it. God, I'm so th at how many people made it out. It was amazing. And uh, I'm, I'm super excited. In fact, in the comments, let me know if you guys, um, I don't want to, there we go. Perfect. Uh, let me know in the comments if any of you guys tried it at home and if you've tried it yet. I uh, would love to get that. I'm seeing a bunch of names I recognize. There's Giga Loop. There's Fargo Wells. Alex W. Magic says he's had it. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> Let's do it. It's right here. I guess I should. Oh, yeah? That's so the, uh, uh, oh, so I got a question. Where's Matt? Matt, Matt. Waffle. Behind you. Waffle, waffle. Uh, as a, as a first-time brewer, how complicated was it from what you'd expected? Oh, it was stupidly simple. I kept on thinking I was screwing something up, but then it turned out really damn good. Well, so. and that's the thing, is, is that it takes time for the stuff to heat up and cool down and to right. pour the thing into the thing, but it's not like it's... You know, it's like you're making a chili, right? It's just... Uh, I've never made a chili. Uh, I would... <laughs> I, I, it's, it's like you're making something in a crock pot. No, it's, all right, was, all right, all right. It felt like it was, It's at least for the actual boiling part, it felt like I was making a slightly more complicated tea. <laughs> yeah, but a four-hour tea yeah, investment. Yeah. The I mean, who it's doesn't spend four hours? Brew yeah. for four hours. Yes. Hold on. Just to break the Ric Flair character, I don't drink beer. This is either. fucking this amazing. Is awesome. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's great. Yeah. I don't beer at all. Oh, this is really that's, good. that's yeah. wonderful. It's sweet. It's not like, no, I feel no, like a lot of beers can be really, like, bitter, bitter but this is really sweet. So well, and and I, the, the, that's the kind of the brown aleness of it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, to be honest, yeah. um, yeah. normally you drink something light, like a Miller Lite or whatever, it, it just goes down so fast. Whereas one of these, it's just sweet enough that it kind of slows me down. Yeah. Now the alcohol content can be higher if you're brewing it yourself. So yeah, do we ever get a read on exactly how much more uh, alcohol he has? Waffle, do you know how much more 30% I have no freaking clue. <laughs> Like I, I, I might I have one bottle left at home that I might when we pour it do another calculation on and actually test it, but I have no idea. Uh the question is, have I gotten drunk off of this brew? I I got buzzed off of the one bottle that I had. Last night? Uh oh yeah, I guess I got buzzed off of yours for sure. But but the one that the, that I made uh got me got me good and buzzy. How are we doing on this? We're not running out, are we? Not yet. Okay. We're doing pretty good. You're gonna have any man? Yeah, no, sign me up. All right, I'm here. definitely in. I got the special one for you. Okay, so. here, in fact, let me get this. There it is. Oh, I'm gonna let that, I'm gonna let that foam <laughs> go straight down. Yeah, I didn't design it to have a foam that glass. Oh, this is a good question. What's the ABV? 
Uh, this one is swinging about 5.8. About 5.8. So a little more kick than your than your bud rod. Or about, I don't know, I guess around bud standard beer. About, uh, five and a half, right? percent usually. So oh, is it? Are, some of them around there, this is more of just your standard, what you expect for a craft beer where you're spending a couple extra bucks at the tap. Right here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, and, and people are saying it's very busy for a brown. That's accurate, but that's because we sent it high pressure so it would travel. And we're, and we're pouring it into a cup that has a bunch of cavitation points, like these are rough cups. Got and it. you pour any beer into any rough cup, and you'll get that. And uh, yes, it has a lot of head on it. Uh, that be an English brown shouldn't have much head, but that's because the English they don't like pleasure. They yeah. prefer suffering, from what I've been uh, told. And so we Americans, we like to have a lot of head on our beer because it's awesome. Ha! No, it's really good. Right on. Uh, all right. Well, here I'm gonna. I am going to take a sip. Here's to you, beautiful people. Oh, that's good. Uh, yours, this is definitely more carbonated than mine was, carbonated by the yeast. And is that something that I could have just added more sugar to get more? Uh, sorry. Sorry. We got to uh, wait for it. There we go. Definitely. Yeah, we definitely got crashed by T-Rexes. This is the problem with the... <laughs> This is always a, uh, a potential disaster. It's a road hazard. <laughs> Give me a beer. They could. Mm. All right, so what's the investment to go to keg style beer making? I mean, obviously you have to buy the, pay, the keg. So like, how much does this kind of setup so cost? This is a this is a two and a half gallon keg. Usually when you're doing big brewing, it's in five gallons. Okay. You're looking at probably about 80 bucks for a keg, uh, per keg that you're going to have. Uh, your CO2, let's say you get the whole system, like two kegs, a CO2 system, and some lines and regulators, you're probably looking about 160, 180 or so. Wow. But the, it can be that. Yeah. But the CO2 tank is rechargeable, so it costs like 15 bucks to get that recharged. The kegs you just use over infinitely. So if you're really getting into brewing, this is a great way to go. Uh, if you're just doing it every once in a while, bottles is a great way to go because you can just hold off on, hold onto those on the side, and you don't have to, have to worry about having a. Uh, well, and, and it's the kind of thing that you're not going to do, you know, because you're 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 a cheapskate. You're going to do it because you're going to iterate and try to make your own blends and brews and impress your friends, right? That's to a point. I mean, you can save a lot of money doing it this way. You can make awesome stuff with people. For me, it's a passion, so I'm willing to spend the extra to set up a, a kegging system. I've got a three tap kegerator in my uh, in my house with uh, a couple kegs extra in there for conditioning but I'm also pouring for a bunch of different events I'm saying up for competitions yada 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 yeah thank you turn amazing all right I think we're about to wrap up is, is that uh, is anyone else yeah it's already been almost 20 minutes damn we got it is there anybody who hasn't gotten a taste you wanted a taste? Yo. Oh, right here? All right, we got we got a line. All right, get on over here, girl. Got any more extra cups? Yeah, we, we've got more cups yeah. coming, oh. but we ran out. There's so many people. Oh, shit. Okay, well, then I guess I guess we have we have to do the actual toast. Uh, everybody raise Emily. your glass. Emily, how much did you want? Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. This is the official inaugural uh, Rogue's Toast. I say in honor of Michael Lipton, our brewmaster extraordinaire. Everybody raise a glass to Michael. Now let's drink. Yes, sir. Oh, that's good stuff. Uh, all right, well, we're going to keep the party going here. But if you guys want to make your own stuff at home, head on over to scamstuff.com. That's gear for the modern rogue, S-C-A-M-S-T-U-F-F.com, and just look up the uh, Rogue's Brew Kit, uh, and for $99, by the way, we make almost no money on it because we we, uh, we forgot we had to include bottles, and so they come with really nice bottles. It's a really badass kit, $99, and you're all set. Uh, love you guys. We're going to go back to Dragon Con. we call it in tonight. Right, now the awkward ending. <laughs> <laughs>